it's Alex Popham again, the Breckenridge County 4-H agent, and this is the second video in our three parts on how to create your own entomology project for 4-H. So um, since we're talking about pinning today, we have to really start out by thinking about the parts of an insect. So if we start out over here, we know that a spider is not an insect. It only has two body parts, a cephalothorax and an abdomen, compared to our insects that we're gonna be pinning today that actually have three body parts. So we have a head where all the, the sensing and understanding of the world around them happens. And then the thorax, if you were to cut it open and look inside, it is just jam packed with muscles because that is where the legs and the wings attach. So if you were to look on the underside of the insect, you would see that the thorax is everywhere where these legs are attached on the grasshopper. So that's the first two body parts. And then the last body part is the abdomen. And this is where most of uh, the rest of the organs and that type of thing are found on the inside. So when we're talking about pinning insects, you always want to look for the thorax. Um, that's where you're going to be sticking that pin through because as that specimen dries, those muscles are going to um, shrink and kind of hold on to that pin. So you want to make sure that you stick it um, through those muscles. And we're going to be talking a lot about the placement of the pin because depending on the insect, you want to place the pin on a certain part of the thorax so that those legs and wings and the other features um, don't get damaged or fall off. Uh, the other thing that we'll need to focus on as we're pinning our insects is we want to make sure that our insects look as lifelike as possible. Um, so you want them to be pinned as if they're crawling along. So we definitely don't pin them upside down. We'll want to pin them as if they're, they're alive. And I'm just going to use this 4-H gavel as an example. We'll pretend this is our giant pin. And as we're pinning this beetle, we want to make sure that it's nice and level with the ground. We don't want it looking like it's tipping off the pin one way or the other. And we don't want it um, rotated to the left or the right. We want it looking, again, as natural as possible. So we'll start out looking at some samples, some specimens that I've already pinned. Um, here we have insects in the top half of the box uh, where we actually pin it through the middle of the thorax. And that's important so that those wings and those legs don't fall off. And as that specimen dries, it's going to really hold on to the pin. So things that we pin in the middle of the thorax include our bees, ants, wasps, and even our butterflies and moths. Okay. Um, insects that we're going to pin a little off to the right uh, will include things like our flies, our grasshoppers and crickets, any of our true bugs that have that little triangle shape um, that's uh, very characteristic, and then any of our beetles, whether it's our ladybugs, our um, june beetles, click beetles, ground beetles, anything like that. So to start off with, you cannot use sewing needles. There are special um, you know, insect pinning needles, and I have a couple different sizes here. Uh, they do go from zero, zero, all the way up to four or larger, and so the larger the number, uh, the thicker the pin. And those insect pins for 4-H uh, purposes, you know, a size two is fine unless you think you're going to be pinning some really small or some, some very large insects. Okay, so we'll start off um, with this specimen over here. This is actually a type of wasp. Uh, this is a red velvet ant, but it does fit in the wasp family. And as I mentioned, those type of insects, you do have to pin in the thorax in the center. So here we have the head, the thorax right here that the legs are attached to, and then we have the abdomen on the back side. So I'm just gonna take my pin, and I'm gonna try to pin it in the center and get it as straight up and down as I can. Now, once I get it into the insect, that insect pin, I'm gonna use something called a pinning block so that all of my insects in my collection are at the same height. And I'm gonna use the top stair, the top block, um, to put the insect at the correct height. In the next video, we'll be looking at our labels and we'll make sure and get those labels um, using these other two uh, pieces of the pinning block, okay? And see, I didn't get it straight in the middle, and what happened, I lost one of my legs. So this just takes practice, and there's a little bit of an art to it. So this one I've tried to pin in the middle. Our next specimen is a dragonfly, and I'm going to pin it in the middle as well. Okay, and get it at the right height. So again, pinning it in the middle. 
And then the rest of the specimens I have here, we're actually gonna pin a little off to the right. I have a cicada. I'm gonna turn it around to make it a little easier to see. Um, but this cicada, I'm gonna pin it, uh, usually this particular species has these black markings right here, and I'm gonna take advantage of that as kind of a guide, and I'm gonna try to pin here on the right one. So I'll get it started, and I will use my pinning block to get it the rest of the way. Okay. For those who maybe are using the black light trap, this is one species you might find in the trap. This is a Dobson fly. With the Dobson fly, you can see where the wings are covering the thorax and the abdomen, and there's a little space in between the wings. So I'm gonna pin there on the thorax, but again, a little bit to the right. Okay. Next, we have a wheel bug. This is a type of true bug. And for all of our true bugs, we're pinning them a little to the right. Now, typically in a true bug, you would see um, this characteristic triangle shape like you think of in a stink bug. But for this wheel bug on the side, you can see the wheel is kind of covering up that, uh, that triangle, that piece of the prothorax that we're gonna pin in. So I'm gonna pin on the right as best as I can through his wheel, try to get him as straight as I can, and then place him on the pinning block little antennas when you get up. There we go. All right. And again, trying to get him as level with the ground as you can so that he looks more lifelike and doesn't look like he's falling off of that pin. All right. Here's a tachinid fly. This is a, a parasitoid. This is a good fly you like to see in your garden. And I'm going to pin him a little to the right. And here's his thorax right here where his wings are attached. Try to get them as straight as I can. Okay. All right. We have a beetle here, a longhorn beetle. And we'll talk about place placements of the legs and the antenna in a minute. I'm just going to move them out of the way. Now we have a prothorax up here, but with our beetles, you'll want to aim for that elytra, those hard uh, front wings that kind of cover up their, their membranous flight wings, and you're actually going to pin through those elytra, and you'll choose the right wing, and again, um, a little off center. Okay, let me get them at the right height using my pinning block. We'll fix his antenna in a minute. And uh, we've done another beetle. Why don't we do a grasshopper next? So the grasshopper, we're actually gonna pin through this scutellum or part of the prothorax right behind the head. Little off center, a little to the right. Make sure he's nice and straight. All right. And then for sake of time, I'm not gonna go through and tweak them, but this is where the artistry comes in it. And you can use all sorts of pins to help get the insects in position. You want their legs and antenna placed so that they look like they're still alive. So use your pins to get them in a nice lifelike life um, position. And you can do the same with the legs. So use as many pins, insect pins, as you need to and use them to place the legs as if they're sitting or crawling along. Okay. And you'll do that for all the legs, all the antenna, to really make your, uh, your specimens look lifelike. Uh, you will get judged on neatness and the artistry that goes along uh, with this project. Now, if you have an insect like this longhorn beetle and it has a large abdomen, um, you might have to split it open and pull out those organs and clean it out and then maybe stuff it with a little uh, bit of dry, clean cotton so that it still retains its shape, uh, but the abdomen won't end up rotting on you. For a specimen this size, you're probably okay, but if you decide to pin some of those large Madagascar hissing cockroaches, you'll definitely want to um, you know, remove as much, as much of the moisture out of the abdomen as you can. 
And then if you feel like your specimen, that abdomen, looks like it's falling back and, and doesn't look lifelike, you can even use pieces of cardstock and use it to hold up parts of the abdomen. Okay, and let it dry as such. You can even place strips of cardstock underneath the, uh, the legs and that will help hold them in place too, okay? So after you have them pinned in the thorax, you'll want to take some time and, and really make them look their best. Um, once you pin them, you can put them in one of these uh, insect boxes or you can put them straight in your uh, wooden box or we have different size entomology collection boxes. Or in the time being, uh, if you're waiting, you don't have a box yet, a piece of styrofoam or a cardboard box to stick them and pin them through is perfectly fine until you're ready to finish your collection. Now, if you have something like a butterfly or moth, like this uh, painted lady butterfly, uh, you'll want to use something like a spread board. Uh, 4-H Bug Club members, uh, you know that you can check out these spread boards from the extension office, or you can make your own by just cutting pieces of styrofoam into the shape of this spread board, and then you'll just pin your butterfly or moth like you normally would through the center of the thorax. And then you'll just stick it into this pinning board and use pins and strips of paper to really spread those wings out as if it had just landed on a flower. And you want the bottom edge of the forewing to touch the hind edge or the uh, front edge of the hind wing so that they're nice and, and lifelike and neat looking. Now, if you have a really small spe uh, specimen uh, like this lace bug here, uh, one of my favorite little true bugs. Um, it's too small to really stick an insect pin through, so instead we're gonna put it on point, which just means I'm gonna take a point punch, which looks very similar to a hole punch, but you'll see that it makes this characteristic shape. Um, some of your point punches are rounded on the end, some are more um, rectangular, but they all serve the same purpose. I'm gonna take some white cardstock and just punch out some points and then I'm gonna grab that pinning block. I'm gonna stick my insect pin through the fattest part of the point and then get it at the right height because all of our insects need to be at this same height. Now you can bend it a little bit or you can lay it flat. Uh, most entomologists like it bent just a little bit so that you can uh, glue the side of the insect instead of the whole bottom. That way, if you want to, you can flip it upside down and you can see all the cool features on the outside, on the underside of that insect. And just for today, I've poured out some glue into this container. You'll get a little bit of your craft glue on there and then set your small insect specimen. You want it sitting so that the label or the point is on the left side and that the insect looks as if it's crawling along and it's crawling forward, just like our lay swing here, where the head is towards me and the abdomen is in the other direction, okay? So this kind of sums up the different ways you can pin insects. The UK entomology guide that was mailed to everyone goes into more detail. Um, so if you have any questions at all, if you catch an insect that I didn't cover here and you want to know how to pin it, feel free to check out that guide or call the extension office and happy pinning!